So last lesson we learned about radians. The fact that marking radiuses on a circle is another way to measure an angle of rotation. We can actually do a lot more. If this is the x-axis and the y-axis, then right in the middle is of course the origin. And if you remember, the length of the radius is 36 inches or one yard. So I'll just write, this would be at, if this is the origin, I go straight over on the x-axis and this is at one zero. One yard and I didn't go up or down, so one zero, x-coordinate, y-coordinate. Okay, so I'll name the rest. Up here on the y-axis, we have 0, 1, and then on the negative x-axis, we'd have negative 1, 0, and the negative y-axis, we'd have 0, negative 1. Because these points are on the axes, they break us into four quadrants. Quadrant 1, quadrant 2, quadrant 3, quadrant 4. Therefore, we use these as the quadrantals because they break it into quadrants. Let's remember radians last lesson. At zero radians, we had the point one zero. Then at pi halves, the point zero one. And when we get to pi, negative one zero. Remember, this is an angle of rotation. We move the string along the circle's edge. Next, we get to three pi halves at zero negative one, and then two pi, we're back to one zero. So what if I don't want like, to have to stop on just the quadrantals? What if I want to stop like here or over there? How would I find the coordinates for those points? I know that rotating pi over two radians, that's 90 degrees. So if this is pi over four radians, that's just halfway in between my 90 degrees. So there's my 90 degrees. So half of 90 degrees would be 45 degrees here and 45 degrees here. So how would I figure out this point? I wonder if I could make a triangle. Right triangle, because you know, we have so many properties with those and we can deal with them easier. So if this is 45 degrees, this is 90 degrees because of the way I drew it, then this has to be 45 degrees. So if I draw this triangle in, 45, 45, 90, it's a special triangle, so I know it's sides usually, but this is on a particular circle. And I knew the radius of this circle has been one the whole time. So which side would I know then? The radius side. So I know the hypotenuse is one unit, one yard. So how would I figure out these two sides? I know they're congruent. How could I find them? So remember special right triangles, the two legs are congruent. So if we make this one unit, then this has to be one unit. And using the Pythagorean theorem, we know that the hypotenuse is square root two. You can check that out if you've forgotten. However, Miss Ryan's triangle has a hypotenuse the length of one. So this isn't working out for us. How can I make this one and still keep it a 45, 45, 90. So it's gonna be similar triangles. I need to divide by square root two because square root two divided by square root two equals one. But if I do that for the hypotenuse, I have to do the exact same thing for the legs. Because I divided all three sides by the same amount, it's still a 45, 45, 90, and the proportion of the sides are the same. So if this is now a hypotenuse of one unit, the legs are one divided by root two. But wait, we know better than to leave a square root in the denominator. So let's rationalize the denominator. Multiply by a creative form of one, square root two divided by square root two, and we get square root two, and then square root two times square root two is square root of four, which of course is two. So now the hypotenuse is one, the leg is square root two over two. These are congruent, so of course this is also square root two over two. Miss Ryan, can you do something with that? Well, that was helpful because 
I know that this is one, so this would have to be root two over two. That's this distance here in my triangle. So then this would be root two over two. So can I create a coordinate here? Let's see, okay, this is the X coordinate. So in the X direction, I've got root two over two is what lines up to this coordinate. So I know that the X coordinate would be root two over two. In the Y direction, okay, on my Y axis, I'd be hitting root two over two as well, because that's this right here. So root two over two. So now I can find at pi over four radians rotating around my circle. The coordinate on my circle is root two over two comma root two over two. So let's keep rotating around and see if I can keep doing this. So this one, is a quadrantal. So then if I rotate over here, three pi over four radians that I've rotated around my circle. If I want to figure out this coordinate, I'm probably gonna do what I did over there and draw another triangle. Now, I don't, when I co draw a coordinate, I always do the X coordinate first. So I'm always gonna wanna drop to the X axis. And if you think about it in math, we're like pirates anyways, always looking for X. So X is gonna mark the spot. I'm always gonna drop to X. So I know from pi over two to pi, I'm still dividing perfectly in half here, a 90 degree angle, so 45 degrees and 45 degrees. So then this would be one, because it's my radius. Since we're still using the same special triangle, I still know that if this has a hypotenuse of one, this has gotta be root two over two and root two over two. Okay, but remember, we're on a coordinate grid, right? So this is my x-axis, my y-axis, and the whole point of doing this was to find this coordinate right here. Well, this coordinate is on the negative x-axis and the positive y-coordinate. So this really wouldn't be root two over two, it'd be negative root two over two when I write it as a coordinate. So my negative x coordinates, negative root two over two, and my positive y coordinates, root two over two. Boom. So I could do this for the rest of my circle. So I've drawn in my two other triangles for my other points for my 45 degree angles, hopefully. Um, why don't you pause the video right now and see if you can find the coordinate for five pi over four radians and seven pi over four radians. So at five pi over four, I'm in the third quadrant, which is negative x and negative y. So both are negative. So negative root two over two, negative root two over two. All right. So I'm now in the fourth quadrant. So positive x, negative y. So I'm gonna have positive x, so root two over two, negative y, so negative root two over two. We've labeled it. Miss Ryan, look at the pink. It makes a bow tie. We could call this our pi over fourths bow tie. So let's try to do this with pi over sixes. This angle right here, pi over two radians, which I know is a 90 degree angle, and when we broke it up, it would break that 90 degree angles into one, two, three parts. So if I draw that angle in, right there right and then there would be one right here that would be one two three so 90 degrees divided by three would be 30 degrees so we know this angle of rotation is pi over six radians which we now know can be written as a 30 degree angle so if i want to find this coordinate now I could do the same thing, drop to the X, because X marks the spot, and then I got 30 degrees here, 90 degrees, so this must be 60 degrees. The radius of this circle is one, so I run into that same issue, where I don't know my sides because my hypotenuse isn't what it usually is on this special right triangle. Ms. Spirit, can you help me out again? And of course, here's our other special right triangle, the 30, 60, 90. We ended up with the same problem. The hypotenuse is two units, but we want it to be one unit. So we quickly can divide all three sides by two, and we easily have the hypotenuse is one, the short leg across from the 30, 
30 degree angle is one half and the long leg across from the 60 degree angle is root three over two. So one more time, short leg, one half, long leg, root three over two, hypotenuse one. Okay, so that means I know short leg is one half, long leg is root three over two. So if I know these distances, kind of on my x-axis, y-axis, I can get some coordinates. I need my x-coordinate. So that's my x-axis distance is root three over two. And then my y direction, so my y-coordinate, would be the height of my triangle one half. If I jump to this next two pi over six, which is pi over three, it's gonna be a triangle that's just looking different. So let's actually try to complete this triangle's bow tie first. I'm going to skip this guy, rotate to my pi halves, radians. Okay, so this is ro broken up again. We have our 90 degree angle. So this is broken up into three. So I have my 30 degree angle right here. Drop to the X. So there's the other half of my bow tie. So I do the same down here, one side of my bow tie, and complete my bow tie. Right? So let's see if you can label those coordinates using this triangle. Pause the video, try that, and then come back and see if you're spot on. All right, so let's see if you're right. So in the second quadrant, we have negative root three over two, comma one half for our five pi over six radians. Then we hop to pi radians, down to seven pi over six radians. We have negative root three over two, <laughs> and negative one half. So notice, so far all our coordinates have the same like numbers in them. It's been root three over two comma one half, but here our x coordinate changed to negative because we're on the negative x axis. And then down here, both coordinates changed to negative because we're in the third quadrant. Both x and y are negative down there. So our side lengths don't seem to be changing. It's just whether or not they're positive or negative coordinates. So then my last coordinate, still gonna have the negative root three over two and the one half, but now my x coordinate's positive, my y coordinate's negative, because I'm in the fourth quadrant. And there is the pi six bow tie. Okay guys, we're almost there. Miss Ryan took us through the fourth and the sixth, but we still have the thirds. So let's give this a try. Same idea. We know that this is a 90 degree angle. This time I wanna come out, not just to one pi six, I wanna to go to two pi six, which is reduced to pi thirds. So I now have an angle of rotation that goes from zero radians up to pi thirds radians. How many degrees is that? As Miss Ryan explained, we divided it into one, two, three parts. So this was 30 plus another 30. And of course this is 30 here left over. But this angle then is 60 degrees. So actually, when we go ahead and connect, make a triangle back to the X axis, now we end up with another 30, 60, 90. And we already learned about that, but now the 30 degree angle is up here, and this is the short leg. So this is one half. The 60 degree angle is our angle of rotation, and across from the 60 degree angle is the long leg, and that's root three over two. So let me write those in. So now the coordinate on the circle is located at positive one half, and I go up positive root three over two. And you know where it goes from here, bow tie. I'm pretty sure you could finish this. Let's go. Okay, you see the thirds, one third, two thirds, three thirds, but that's a quadrantal. Four thirds, five thirds, six thirds, back to the quadrantal. Go for it. All right, can you see the orange bow tie? Where once again, the lengths of the sides have stayed consistent. The only thing we have to do 
is based on the quadrant and the location of that point, fill in positive and negative. So here in the second quadrant, this point is located at negative one half, positive root three over two. Jumping down to four pi thirds, we're in third quadrant. This point is located at negative one half, negative root three over two. Remember, short leg, one half, long leg, root three over two. Third quadrant, negative, negative. Pop over here, fourth quadrant, the X axis is positive. The Y, we go down, so that's negative. So this point on the circle is located positive one half, negative root three over two.